Welcome back to the OG RAV4 channel. I'm Omar and in today's video I will explain what these two buttons that you see here on the screen are for, what do they do. So let's get to it. If you're new here we talk about Toyota RAV4 and Toyota related topics. If you're about that life, please remember to like this video, subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell so that you're always notified whenever we drop new content to the channel. All right, so real quick, I want to give you a rundown of what the power and menu buttons that you see on the screen are for. I already did a video in Spanish on our channel explaining what they do, but I thought I might as well do one in English, given that this question seems to come up often. The first thing you need to know is that they are not standard in all RAV4s. They only come in the automatic transmission models, particularly those that are originally from the Japanese domestic market. In fact, models manufactured in the United States don't come with these two buttons. You actually only get one. I'll put a picture of the button on the screen so you know what it looks like. As you can see, the button reads ECT, which stands for Electronic Control Transmission. But again, it's only an option that comes with the models equipped with the automatic transmission. If you have a RAV4 that's equipped with the manual transmission, that is also a four-wheel drive, you will see a button like the one on the screen, which allows you to lock the center differential, known as the center locking differential. I will talk about that option in another video, about how the full-time four-wheel drive system works in these RAV4s. For now, I will just focus on these two buttons. The other thing you need to know is that these buttons have nothing to do with the four-wheel drive system. Absolutely nothing, nothing to do with it. They do, however, have to do with your automatic transmission. There are options that allow you to get a little more juice out of your transmission if you have the automatic transmission. So the button on the right, the power button, and what that does is that if you turn that on, the ECU will tell the transmission to delay shifting up in gears. For example, if you want to upshift from second to third gear or from third to fourth gear, the transmission will delay upshifting and this will allow the RPMs to climb so that you can pick up more speed or more momentum quicker. This is a very handy feature if you need to merge into a freeway or if you need to accelerate faster. But not only will it delay the transmission upshifting in gears, in fact, if you happen to be in a higher gear already and all of a sudden you need to accelerate to pass someone on the road, it will also downshift a little more often, allowing you to pick up much needed momentum. Now the button on the left, the menu or manual button, you have to be very careful with that little guy. This button essentially allows you to shift gears manually. What this button does is when it's engaged, it tells the ECU to hold whatever gear you're at the time, like second or third gear, and it will continue to hold that gear, whatever that may be, regardless of your speed, until you disengage it. So you must be very careful, again, because if you engage it while in a lower gear, say while you're in first or second gear, you might just end up frying your transmission a lot sooner. Especially if you're one that likes to go hard on that gas pedal while in a lower gear, you might just kill your transmission. So make sure you're paying attention to that. That's why I personally do not use that button because if you're not careful, you'll end up toasting your transmission. All right, now that I've explained what those two buttons do, let's go for a test drive so that you can actually see how the vehicle behaves in real time when those buttons are actuated. That said, I will not be testing the ECT or power button. This one's pretty self-explanatory, right? So I will just be put into the test how the vehicle responds when the menu button is engaged. So this is going to be a test drive of this little button menu or short for manual. We're going to see how it behaves and I'm hoping that this catches everything that I do. Uh, just FYI right now I'm on the lowest gear, on first gear and we're, let's go ahead and engage this guy. There we go. It says ECTS menu. Okay so here we go. Just in the neighborhood right because we're not exactly sure how it's going to respond. Still on first gear, still on first gear, still on first gear. Boom, I saw up to second, there, did it? Yeah, it hasn't swapped, so. There we go. Still in second. I keep it in 
second. Let's see if it will swap. Oh, okay, so it doesn't downshift. It just stays in second. Because I didn't feel an upshift from first to second. So again, right now I'm in second gear. Button still engaged. Let's come to the stop here and I'll bring you back down to the lower gear. Again, just to show you guys, I'll read out what my tachometer says too. Because I don't know if you guys can actually see it from the position of the camera, but I'm back in lower gear. Here we go. Yeah, still, still going, still going. 3000 RPMs. I swapped to second. There you go. There's the shift. So I'm still in second. Yep, it just stays in second the whole time. All right now, I'm going here, going back to low. Menu's still on. It checked it at 3000 RPMs. I'm in second, 3000 RPMs. About it to drive. So I'm pretty sure I'm in fourth gear right now when I'm in drive because my RPMs went down quite a bit. I'm going 70 kilometers an hour. Uh, that's roughly 45 miles an hour. I'm going 80. Well, let's keep going. My RPMs are climbing. I'm going 110 kilometers an hour. Menu still engaged. There we go. No, now they're climbing. Obviously I'm getting faster. Just for a second there, it appeared like it was just keeping that lower RPM. Okay, so I'm going basically 120. This is about 68 miles an hour. My RPMs are 3,000. Off the gas, my RPMs are coming down, also my speed. I'm still in drive, it upshifted because I lost so much speed. Again, I'm still in drive, right? So, what I want to do is I'm gonna come to a stop, I'm gonna actuate the overdrive and see what that does coming down to L or first gear. Here we go. Boom. Second gear. I brought it up. Overdrive off. Now third gear. Okay, I'm on drive, but I have my overdrive off. So this means that I should be in third gear and it's not going to upshift. See, I'm at 3,000 RPMs, I'm at 90 kilometers an hour, again, that's about 55, and yep, yeah, it hasn't upshifted. This would be handy if you need to pass somebody relatively quickly, you need to pick up speed. I'm going to turn off overdrive, I'm going to turn it back on, there you go, you did. I'm 100 kilometers an hour, that's 60 miles an hour, and my RPMs are at 2,500 RPMs. This whole time a menu has been on. There you go guys, that's what menu in real life looks like. Again, it's just short for manual. Basically, it's almost like a sport mode. Some of you might have vehicles or seen vehicles where even though you have an automatic transmission, you can set it to S or sport mode, which means that it gives you the ability of manually up and down shifting. A little bit different than just your stick. So that's basically what this does. Most important thing to remember is if you have this guy engaged, you have to manually shift the gear, whether you're going up or if you want to go down, if you want to do a compression shift or down shift. Otherwise, if you don't remember to do that shift in gears, it will toast your transmission. So keep that in mind. I've read in certain forums that it will keep your RPMs. And in this test that I did, it didn't maintain my RPMs if I downshifted or upshifted. Again, this is my first time trying this out. I just wanted to do it so that you guys could get a little idea 
of what this looks like in real life. So if I miss something, please go ahead and let me know in the comments. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully uh, it gave you a relatively good enough idea of how it behaves. If you have manual engage and you turn off the overdrive, remember it will stay in third gear, not in fourth. And we saw that here, the RPM stayed high. Until I turn the overdrive back on, they can back down. If you leave it in drive the whole time while man you, it will be shift like it normally does. All right guys, that wraps it up for today's video. I hope that you found it useful. Now you should know what the ECT or power button and the man or menu buttons are for, how you can use them out there on the road. My personal thoughts on the menu button Basically, there's no real reason why you should need to actuate it. In vehicles with automatic transmissions that do have that mode, it's normally called a sport mode, it can be funner to drive, you can pick up speed a little bit faster. However, on this guy, being that it has very little torque and horsepower, you don't gain much by actuating it. In fact, in my opinion, it's more tedious and you just increase the risk of damaging your transmission prematurely. So if you do find yourself needing to pick up speed to accelerate a little more quickly, I would just suggest just stick with the overdrive and the ECT or power buttons. Again, that will just uh, ensure that you don't damage your transmission prematurely. That said, if I did miss any information regarding these two features, please let me know in the comments. I would love to hear your thoughts. With that said, until the next one, guys, thank you. If you enjoyed this video, please like and share it. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell. We would appreciate your support. Until then, guys, thank you very much.